Thomas and I serve in the K1 room and I'm so glad you guys are here with us this morning. Now stand on up so we can worship together.
chocolate chip cookies using her secret recipe. Yum! My grandma lives so far away, we had to take a plane. Well, look at this one. This is the night before Christmas, right before bedtime. I was super excited for the next morning. I thought I was never gonna go to sleep. I just love looking at all these photos. Ho, ho! It's Ollie! Hello, Zoe. Ho, ho! Looking at a book of pictures, are you? I sure am. I just love looking at my photo album. It has so many pictures of me and all the places I love to go. Remembering where you've been is fun. It's true. I've got a story about all those places for you. Just listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. I'm Casey, and I'm helping out at the Cupcake Food Truck. Do you want to see today's special? Ta-da! Okay, these are all the places I've gone with the food truck. I went to the beach, I went to a campsite, and I was here in the city. And do you know what? No matter where I went, I always did one thing. Do you want me to tell you about it? If you're ready, on the count of three, yell, tell me a story. One, two, three. Tell me a story. Each place I went was totally different, but there was one thing I did no matter where I went. Do you wanna know what I did? I talked to God, it's true. I talked to God on the beach and at the campsite and in the city. We can talk to God anywhere. The Bible teaches us we can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. Let's think about all the times we can talk to God. Okay, can we talk to God when we wake up in the morning? Yes! Can we talk to God at night before we go to bed? Yes! We can talk to God anytime. Daytime, nighttime, bath time, nap time, anytime. And do you know what we can talk to God about? Mm -hmm. Anything. Can you talk to God and tell him you're feeling scared when there's a storm outside? Yes. Can you tell God when you're sad, when your friends aren't being nice? Yes! 
You can always tell God when you're sad. What about when you're happy? Because it's your birthday and you're getting presents. Can you tell God about it? Yes! You can talk to God about anything. That is so amazing. I love that we can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. And guess what? God hears us. And you know why? Because you, right there, yes, you. You are so very important to God, no matter where you are or what you're doing, whether you're loud or quiet. You can talk to God and he will hear you because you're important. God made you and loves you. Did you like that story? If you did, give it two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> hey, Ollie, tell me, who made you? God made me. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who made you? God made me. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. See you next time. Bye. So there's your story. It's all true. You can talk to God, and he always hears you. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Hoo, hoo. Isn't that great? We can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything, and he always hears us. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say, got it. Get it? Good. I can talk to God when I'm at my grandma's house and when I'm at home. I can talk to God anywhere and he always hears me. You know what? How about I take a picture of you right where you are? You ready? Say cheese. Fantastic job, everyone. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. And wonderfully made. Psalms 139 14. Hey Calvary kids, welcome to another edition of our game show and today we have the Gage family and the McKnight family. Hey guys, how's it going? Good. Good. Can you introduce yourselves? I'm Tyler. I'm Natalie. I'm Addie. Tyler. Carter. Stella. Stella, all right. And today's game is a dizzy game where you're going to have to focus on what we're doing here. So I'm going to have one person spin circles blindfolded and the other two people on your team are going to help guide you over to grab one of your presents. You guys are going for the white presents, you guys are going for the red presents. It's a relay. The first team to get three presents back and forth wins. Does that make sense? Yeah. On your mark, get set, spin! One.
How do you build a friendship? Some people think it's all about climbing the ladder of popularity or gathering the biggest number of followers on social media. Others believe it means throwing a birthday party at the best place so everyone will want to come. Or even laughing along when someone makes a mean joke so that you can fit with the in crowd. But none of those things can promise you real friendship. Building true friendships is not about being in. It's about being the end for others. It's showing someone that you care about them and not just yourself. It's a smile and an encouraging word when someone in your class is having a bad day. It's making a spot at your lunch table for the kid who doesn't have a place to sit. It's inviting a new kid to your birthday party, even if it's just in the backyard. <laughs> it's taking time to make your own get well card for the kid in your small group who broke his leg. When you choose to be a friend, you create a safe, welcoming place for others. You'll discover you're building true friendships and others will see God at work in your life. That's why friendship is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Cause worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud.
humans, it's your boy Jacob, and it's time to show off some creativity. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. That's right, God made you out of about 30 trillion building blocks that we call cells. And I'm about to use this many building blocks to create the International Space Station. The one I'm making is much smaller. When building a complicated structure like this, it helps to have creative building technique. Some people count out all the blocks and follow the instructions to the letter. I call these people the building block robots. Insert piece 325B into a piece 356-D. Some people can just look at a picture of the International Space Station and know exactly where every little piece goes. These people are called the visionaries. Yes, I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it. It's picturesque, that piece goes there, and we bring that piece in and it comes together. I'm the kind of person who falls into the third category. I use the just wing it technique. I'm a just wing it -er, er person. I mean, come on, these, these are toys. They're, they're supposed to be fun. I mean, how much fun is that? Now let's get creative, but most of all, let's have some fun. Uh, so I don't know, just give me uh, like 15 minutes. I'll get this all, all worked out. Why? I just, there's, there's just too many blocks. There's too many blocks. There's, there's just, I've, I've been looking, there's this one little gray piece that I need to make it Perfect, and I can't find it anywhere. This is this is supposed to be fun. I'm supposed to be having fun, and this isn't fun at all. Wee wee wee! There it is. Oh no! Hold on. Nobody move. I just lost it. There's a little gray piece. <sighs> Clearly, I could use a hand here. Probably a few hands. The story today is about a guy who needed a hand, and his friends who used their hands and their head to get him some help. They worked together. Say, that's not a bad idea. I've got to make some phone calls. See you in a bit. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Jesus began teaching and healing in Galilee. He had become so popular that a whole mob of people would show up whenever he entered a town. Oh, my tummy hurts. My donkey has bad breath. Tell me how to get rich quick in my spare time working from home. For a time, Jesus stayed out of the towns in lonely places, but even then people came to him. So he returned to the town of Capernaum and word of his arrival spread like wildfire. Stop what you're doing, Jesus is back. Yep, everybody heard the news. Even a man we'll call, um, Bo. He's here in Capernaum. But Bo couldn't just hop up and see Jesus. In fact, he lay on a mat every single day, unable to walk a single step. So his four friends will all huddle together. You think Jesus could help him? Well, sure. How do we get him up there? We've got arms, we've got legs, we'll carry him. So the four friends each took a hold of a corner of the mat and carried Bo directly through town to the home where Jesus was staying. By the time they arrived at the house, they saw everyone in town crowded inside and jammed around the windows and doors outside. Bo could see nothing but a tangle of legs. Guys? There's no way to get inside. I know. Bo can crowd surf into Jesus. That's uh, one idea. Or, or, or I could tie a couple of foxes together, set their tails on fire, and, and let them loose to make a pathway inside. That's also an idea. 
We could try the roof. Whoa. The roof? We're not turning back now. So together, the four friends carried Bo on his mat up the narrow stairs that led to the roof. They could hear Jesus' voice below filtering through the clay roof tiles. God's kingdom is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds. But when you plant the seed, it becomes the largest of all. Guys, how does coming up here help? We're closer to Jesus. He's right beneath us. Hey, are you thinking what I'm thinking? It's time to raise the roof. Working together, the four friends shifted the heavy tiles until they made a hole in the roof. Below, they could see Jesus. Along with a crowd of confused religious leaders, teachers, and townspeople. The sky is falling! Time to move it. Using ropes, the four friends picked up Bo's mat again and slowly lowered him down through the hole in the roof. And I'm free, free falling. No! Don't worry, we got you, Bo. Everyone below scrambled to get out of the way as Bo's mat came to rest on the floor right in front of Jesus. Um, hi? It seemed as though everyone in the room held their breath as Jesus looked up to see the four friends peering down from the hole in the roof. Jesus could see the deep faith that had led them to bring their friend to him. Then Jesus looked down at Bo and smiled. Son, your sins are forgiven. <gasps> the religious leaders were shocked. Though no one said a word, they were practically screaming inside their heads. What? That's evil. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew exactly what they were thinking. If Jesus could forgive sins, he was claiming to be God. Why are you thinking these things? Is it easier to say to this man, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk? Huh. Fat chance of that. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. From above, Fred, Mary, Pip, and Sam all watched in fascination as Jesus turned back to Bo. Get up, take your mat, and go home. Every eye in the room turned from Jesus to Bo. For the tiniest moment, Bo hesitated. Then, he sat up. With growing confidence, he swung his legs around. And then, he scrambled up to his feet. <laughs> up above, his friends cheered. Huzzah! Oh, you go, Bo! Bo took a step. A hop. A leap! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. As the crowd watched in amazement, Bo picked up his mat and danced right out of that house. People moved aside faster than if Bo had been a, a fox with its tail on fire. I've never seen anything like it. Well, bless his heart and praise the Lord. Bo had been healed by the power of God and because his friends had worked together to help bring him to Jesus. You can accomplish a lot when you're being creative. You can cure diseases. You can design buildings. You can build an international space station out of blocks. Pretty amazing, right? But here's a little secret. You can almost always accomplish more by being creative with others. Other people can help you come up with ideas you've never had before. Other people can help you put your ideas to work faster and better than you can do on your own. And just like in our story of the friends who helped the man who couldn't walk, other people can help solve your problems. And when the problem's too big, other people can lead you to Jesus. No problem's too big for him. When we're creative, we reflect who God is to the people around us. And when we work with others, when we use our unique creative techniques with the unique creative techniques of other people, we can really show the world how uniquely creative God is. That's the one thing to remember today. God created you to work with others. You know, 
I didn't build this thing all by myself. I called in a bunch of people to help. Some were building block robots, and some were visionaries. And some, like me, brought the fun. And we were just winging it, man. Wee! Just kidding. I'll see you next time. <laughs>